In today's flower photography tutorial, we're taking a look at this beautiful poppy. It's all opened up so we have some lovely petals and of course all of that detail in the centre to take a look at. Stick around and I'll see you in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and welcome back to another flower photography tutorial where today we are taking a look at this poppy. It's a relatively large flower. It's uh, much bigger than anything that we've shot here on the channel before. Um, usually they're relatively small flowers and we can make use of our macro lens to get nice and close, but also still get the whole flower in shots. Now to get the whole of this flower in shot uh, is going to be a little bit tricky, but it does present uh, some interesting challenges. I do want to get up close and try some focus stacking, and I want to make use of some new developments in the Daptilux lighting to light this much larger subject. Developments, I hear you say. What are the new developments with the Adapter Look Studio? Well, uh, the regulars around here will know that we've had the Control Pod Mini on the way for quite a while now, and the big news is that this is now available for general purchase. You can go and pick one of these up, and it's worth taking a look, even if you've already got the Adapter Look Studio and the Control Pod 3, because what we're doing today is actually using both of these in tandem to get a lot more versatility in our lighting on a much larger flower than we're used to. Uh, so the Control Pod 3 here with its five ports has been the default for a long time, and it's got all of uh, the same controls to control the brightness of all of these lighting arms, and it's also got Bluetooth control as well. Well, so uh, that's been the default, but now we have this much smaller uh, version of the control pod with simplified controls and only one port in the front. This is going to allow us to uh, take individual lighting arms off to different areas of our image. Uh, there's a sort of a soft limit on how large you can photograph a subject with just the control pod. Obviously, the lighting arms can only reach so far, so uh, small subjects, absolutely fine bigger subjects, you're going to struggle to reach uh, all the way around your subject uh, until now. Now we can uh, bring our lighting in from all different directions just simply by plugging in a single lighting arm into the Pod Mini and taking it off around the back of the subject or bringing it up from underneath or uh, from the top or just generally the opposite direction to where our light has uh, been coming from with the Pod 3. So. Uh, Enough talk, I'm going to go and set all of this up and get a few shots of my flower and see what it's looking like initially. So as I usually do, I've placed my Control Pod 3 down on a mini tripod on the top of my table. I've actually had to extend the legs up so that the whole thing sits a little bit higher because this plant is uh, really, really tall actually. Uh, so I've extended both lighting arms up to the full height of the flower and they're coming in from the sides. And taking a closer look at this flower, it really is very interesting. I'm not a flower expert, um, but I'm guessing this is the seed pod in the middle here, um, surrounded by these little um, stamen, and then these, uh, these huge petals extending out to the sides with really nice white colour uh, and a little dash of purple. So one thing that I did want to do is actually bring a little bit more purple into this shot using my lighting as well. I want to uh, maybe test out a little purple colour filter on the end of this lighting arm, uh, which should bring a nice little shade of coloured light across those white petals. Now this is all well and good, and you can maybe shoot through the middle here. I'll have a go at that and see what that looks like. But I also want to uh, maybe bring in a little bit of lighting around the back and backlight some of these uh, rear petals and shine some light through that center from the back. And as you can see, this is already stretching uh, the length of our lighting arms just to reach up to the, the height of the flower. So what I want to do is actually find a way to bring another lighting arm in from the back. Uh, top points to anybody that can guess how we're going to do that. Now, if you guessed uh, use a Pod Mini, then of course you'd be right. Uh, but initially, at least, I'm not going to be using it in the way that I just described. In fact, I'm going to use the Pod Mini to bring the light in from the front of the shot and use the Pod 3 to bring it in from the sides 
and the back. Uh, that's an interesting way to do it because it's going to give me a lot more versatility in my back and side lighting and a single light up front to light up that color. Uh, so I'm going to use a few different combinations of lighting arms and colors to see what that looks like. First of all though, I need to attach my uh, blue pod mini here to my uh, camera. Uh, the colors of the pod mini are just an aesthetic choice, but there are a few nice little colors that they come in. Uh, notably though, we have this connector at the back. And onto the back of uh, the pod mini, we can just slide various attachment mounts. So uh, I've got a camera and tripod mount here, uh, and that is just going to screw it into place as you would expect. Uh, and then we have a little bit of vertical movement so we can tilt the lighting arms up and down and all of that just slides onto my camera hot shoe and as simple as that we have a single lighting arm port attached to the camera and five ports down on the table all to play around with in various configurations. So here's that configuration again. We've got the Control Pod 3 down here, still on the mini tripod, and those same two white lighting arms plugged in. Uh, but I've changed them round now because we've got one underneath the petals, almost uh, lighting from underneath, glowing through the underside of the flower. We've still got this uh, purple color filter on here, almost coming in from below and front uh, lower corner of the, um, of the frame. But then we have the Pod Mini bringing in this main key light now just attached to the camera, bending over and lighting up the center of the flower there really nicely. Now, there is one thing that you need to do with the Pod Mini that uh, you don't necessarily need to do with the Control Pod, and that's turn on boost mode. You can do that by hitting both buttons on the top of the Pod at once, and it will turn on boost mode for the Pod Mini. You'll need to do that every time you plug in a new lighting arm, but it's just something to remember to make sure that that key light is as bright as it can be. Now, I do need to balance these out a little bit because it's looking very bright on this light just here shining up through the petals, but hopefully that will make for an interesting shot. With the challenge of getting our lighting all the way around our flower solved by the Pod Mini, uh, we do have another challenge when it comes to flowers uh, that are large like this. Especially when you're shooting using a macro lens like I am, uh, you get a very shallow depth of field. And I really want to get all of that detail of the center of the flower and some of those petals. I want to get all of that in focus. And the way that I'm going to do that is by focus stacking. Now, Surprisingly, I've never actually focus stacked a flower before. I've not done any flower photography in a little while and I only got into, uh, <laughs> into focus stacking everything in between. Uh, so I'm going to have a go at focus stacking some of my shots today to try and get some really sharp, lovely images of my flower. Uh, the way that I'm going to be doing that, uh, the keen-eyed among you will have already noticed how it's by using this manual focus stacking rail, uh, which goes between the camera and the tripod. This just allows me to move my camera very, very slowly forward and back along um, the axis that we need for focus stacking. So we're going to be moving the camera forward and backwards, moving the, the point of focus through my image. I'll be taking photographs as I go, creating sort of sharp cross sections of the subject. So each different uh, movement, I'll take a photograph and we'll have what's called a photo stack. Uh, we can then process that in a, a piece of software called Helicon Focus. Um, it just stacks them all together and processes them out so that you get a perfectly sharp image. I do have a full tutorial on how to uh, recreate this process. I'll link it up in the top right hand corner for you. That's using screws, but this is the same principle, just on a slightly larger subject. This is a really, really handy technique if you're shooting um, quite large flowers like this, or even entire plants, bushes, anything like that. Even landscapes can make use of photo stacking. So we'll be making use of it today. Hopefully my images come out nice and sharp. My poppy is looking really lovely. Uh, I've got a few interesting angles on this centerpiece just here. But one thing I am finding is that it's 
pretty tricky to find exactly where to place the light. And that is one of the joys of using LED lighting is that I can experiment really easily to find the perfect position of where I want my lighting to be. And again, that's something that the Pod Mini does really well. I've got my light set up here. I know that I want those two lights in this position, but I do want to fill in a few of the little nooks and crannies and the shadows that are being created by those two lights. Where do I want to place my light? Well, it's just a case of grabbing the Pod Mini with a single lighting arm and finding that spot of where to fill in your shadows. You can experiment like this and see the results on the back of the camera. As long as you're watching your live view while you're moving your lighting around, you can find that spot and then fix your Mini in place using one of the various mounts. And you'll have a perfect image just by experimentation. There's no calculating where the lights should be. You can just have a look and find out for yourself. So like I mentioned, it's been a while since I've shot flowers, but this one was a really nice return to form uh, with the huge petals and that really detailed center and that little hint of purple color. I think I got some really nice images, especially with that technique of focus stacking. Uh, it's been a really interesting shoot and my images, well, I'm really happy with them. They're quite sharp and uh, really, really detailed. Let me know what you think to my shooting style uh, down below in the comment section. If you've got any uh, tips or anything that you would have done differently, do let me know. And if you enjoyed my shots today, do make sure to like the video. For now, that is all that I've got time for though. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.